So now our last speaker in this session is Geshe Yeshe Tunduk. Geshe, welcome. My voice is so low, I don't know whether you can hear or not. I hope everyone is continuously well. <laughs> Good afternoon. <clears throat> it is my pleasure <clears throat> to sit and share the thoughts of the Buddha, Shayamuni among the heirs of Pali tradition and Sanskrit traditions, because it is on this basis we can build up trust, harmony, and French, friendship, okay, among the, uh, the followers of Buddhism, uh, Buddha Dharma. So this is the only way, okay, we cannot build up friendship among us, any, uh, 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 Rather than, I mean, rather than understanding each other's tradition, we, there's no any other option or methods to build up the, uh, the genuine, I mean, the genuine friendship, genuine aspiration among us. So uh, to build up and to develop a genuine aspiration and friendship among the heirs of uh, Pali tradition and Sanskrit tradition must be must, I mean, must uh, drive from understanding each other's tradition more deeply, okay? So therefore, it is wonderful, it is always wonderful to share <coughs> uh, our, each, our own understandings, okay, uh, with regard to the thoughts of Buddhist Shakyamuni in general, and particularly, okay, the, the, this topic, I mean, the dependent arising, Pratita okay. So this is the core teaching of Buddha Shakyamuni. This is the this distinctive, I think, distinctive quality of teaching given by Buddha Shakyamuni, which, which fulfill Buddhist or Buddha Shakyamuni is distinct from others, okay. Uh, so therefore, not only that, but also uh, it is very, I mean, meaningful to understand dependent arising in terms of uh, alleviate, uh, in terms of alleviating suffering and negative emotions. So therefore, uh, Therefore, I mean, I'm very, I feel very fortunate to talk on um, dependent arising, which is uh, which is uh, theme of my paper. Okay, so uh, beginning to talk on Pratidya Samudbada. Okay, I'm going to talk it in terms of I think five ways. Okay. Etymological meaning of Pratita Samudpada. Okay, this is the first one. The benefit of understanding dependent arising. And then third, categories of dependent arising. And the fourth, what are negative and positive emotions? And then the last, the fifth one, the benefits of getting rid of negative emotions and how to get rid of them. Okay, so these, I think, five are <coughs> uh, sub divisions of my uh, topic, okay. Uh, and now the coming to the first one, etymological meaning of Pratita Samutpada, okay. The Sanskrit word Pratita Samutpada, okay. Pratita means connected or brought into contact. Given that terms such as connected, relative, and dependent are interchangeable. Pratita also refers to being relative, and dependent as well. The suffix samutpada indicates arising, okay. Here the term arising refers to either existing or being produced. There are other interpretations regarding the literal meaning of 
Pratita Samut Pada, such as that given in Basubandus Abidama Kosha Bashaya, Asankas Abidama Samutchaya and Baba Vivekas, Prajna Paradiba. And and uh, yeah, uh, yeah, Baba Vivekas Prajna Para uh, Diba. Asanga and Basubandus Abidama treatises described Pratita Samut Pada as arising of disintegrated functional things, which result from individually repeated causes. Whereas Baba Viveka asserts that the literal meaning of each part of the term Pratita Samutpada is not applicable to every case of dependent arising. Therefore, he claims that the term is applied arbitrarily to every dependent phenomenon, every dependent phenomenon. But in response to that, great Acharya Chandrakirti argued in his Prasanna Pada that uh, uh, such claim is contradictory to Nagarjuna's Yukti Sastika in Tibetan Report uh, Juba, which says, whatever arises in dependence upon so and so is not born as itself by its own nature, meaning Whatever arises depending on causes and conditions is not produced into itself by its own nature. So these two lines, okay, demonstrate the term Pratita Samutpada being literally applicable to all things. Now second <coughs> episode is the benefit of understanding dependent arising, okay. It has tremendous benefit. Uh, in uh, in, in a sutra called, uh, I mean, in a sutra, uh, what is it? Yeah, okay. In sutra, taught in response to, I think this is a, in, in Tibetan is Madhubishri Do. Sutra taught in response to queries of Naga King, Ana Vadapta, I think. The Buddha says, whatever is produced from conditions is not produced. That does not have the nature of arising. Whatever relies on conditions is stated to be empty. One who understands the emptiness is scrupulous. These words indicate that an inferential understanding of emptiness of inherent existence is generated through the reasoning of dependent arising. And also, Ajaya Chandrakiti's Madhimika uh, Avatara states, therefore, by means of this reasoning of dependent arising, all the wrong views are eradicated. The wrong, I mean, here the, the wrong views refers to uh, wrong views um, being, I mean, here wrong views refers to uh, those, the, the, the views, those whole, those. Um, hold things, uh, things as arising either from a same entity of self or arising from inherently separate, separate cause, causes, or arising from both or arising from, uh, uh, arising, I mean, without causes. By applying the valid reason of dependent arising, one can negate the four extremes positions. In addition, given that Whatever is inherently produced must be produced through one of the four extreme ways of production. Once you <coughs> negate the four extremes, uh, extreme positions, you will be able to negate uh, inherent production of things. So knowing dependent arising is crucially and crucially, I think, beneficial in establishing the two, two truths Realizing wisdom in a skillful means of path to nirvana and nirvana and omniscience themselves. In 25th, 24th, I think, 24th chapter of Mula Madhimika Avat, Mula Madhimika Karika, okay, <laughs> Nagarjuna says, in, in Tibetan, Tenjin Te Horju Wama, Dinu Tongba Nyi Dishe, Dinu Tenjin Tawa Di, Dinu Ome Lam Yinos. That which is de dependent origination is explained to be emptiness. That being a dependent designation itself, the middle way. 
here. <coughs> it's, it's at the middle way. Here, okay. The first, I think, uh, two lines reveal that the meaning of dependent arising is the same as the meaning of emptiness, uh, emptiness of inherent emptiness of inherent existence. The third line mentions that uh, the emptiness of inherent existence is posited on dependent arising. For instance, chariot is posited in dependence on the <coughs> wheels, <coughs> nails, axle, and so on. Similarly, whatever is posited, posited in dependence on its constituent parts are empty of inherent existence. The fourth line states that the emptiness of inherent existence is the middle way, free from the extremes of existence and non-existence, absolutism and nihilism, respectively. In, in his Vigraha Bhaya Vardhani, refutation of criticism, Nagarjuna says, I prostrate to the Buddha, the unparalleled one, who made the precious declaration, the emptiness, dependent arising, and the middle way are of the same meaning. The verse again <coughs> reveals the, that the uh, that, uh, middle way, dependent arising and emptiness are synonymous. Since through employing the valid reason of dependent arising, one can negate both extremes of absolutism and nihilism nihilism simultaneously. Um, it is famously known as the king of reasons. It is through this mechanism that uh, the middle way and dependent arising being of the same meaning uh, emerge. Emerges, I think. Now that the, the, the the categories of dependent with respect to the categories of the dependent arising. There are two categories of, I mean, there are two different levels, two different levels of subtlety of uh, dependent arising, okay. Uh, functional things, the gross one is functional things being dependent on their causes and conditions. For instance, the fruition such as uh, that of pleasant or unpleasant experiences arising out of their respective wholesome or unwholesome actions performed in the past. Second, okay, phenomena being dependent on other phenomena rather than just their own causes and conditions. For example, functional things such as a person arising in dependence on its basis of designation and every existent phenomenon arising in relies on designating terms and conceptual thoughts in the sense of being merely posited by the force of conception. Likewise, relative phenomena such as long and short and so on. With regard to dependent arising resulting from causes and conditions, Buddha says in Arya, Arya, Arya Shali, Shali Stamba Sutra, this happens because that exists. This occurs because that, uh, because that is produced. Due to ignorance, compositional action arises. These lines indicate that all produced things must have causes which are characterized by three attributes, impermanence, functionality, and congruence with their results. Geshe-la, you have two minutes. Uh, okay, so since the root cause of all problematic nature is the afflictive emotions in general and particularly the ignorance, so therefore without knowing whether a specific emotion is afflictive or not, one cannot determine whether the emotion, that emotion should be cultivated or abandoned. Therefore. It is essential for individuals to correctly discriminate by applying uh, uh, introspection. Once the causality between problems and the afflicted mind is experientially ascertained, then one can move forward to in seeking remedies for the problems. The hold of negative emotions 
on individual mind is behind such problems in society as drug addiction, alcoholism, corruption, power abuse, exploitation, community in crisis, environmental destruction, gross inequality between rich and poor, and so forth. Thus, an individual person dealing with his or her own uh, emotions does in fact contribute to decreasing these human-made problems. This is the path towards peace, happiness, and quality of life, both of oneself, uh, one's, both, both of oneself, others, and the whole of humanity. So let me demonstrate with a few examples, okay? Imagine, okay, that when you constantly generate negative emotions such as attachment of, for wealth, power, and fame, it is likely that in their person, you could then lose your composure, capacity for making sound judgment and intel, intel, intelligent discrimination. Because of that, driven by negative instincts, you might then pursue immoral means such as exploitation, lying, stealing, cheating, and so on. No matter what outward result are uh, produced, a person committing such actions would eventually end up, end up afflicting, afflicting themselves and others. This could be similar to aggravating your own contagious disease and spreading it to others. That type of that type of, I mean, self-cherishing, self-aggrandizing approach to life has been scientifically demonstrated in countless experiments to result in far greater unhappiness and suffering for such a person. People with more self-centered dispositions are more susceptible to cardiac arrest and depressed lives. On the other hand, other centered people and people who generate more loving kindness have been noted as consistently living healthier and more successful lives in all measures. Oh, no, I, think, I, think. Oh, yeah, I think now. So, you can have one minute. Okay. <laughs> oh. I'll be very generous. Yeah, okay. <laughs> So, yeah, okay. So, I mean, uh, I think the, I, I, I quote, okay, as, a great, as the great master Tamagita says in his Parmanda Vartika Kariga, Kangshi Dadon Tela Ming Ashi Dadu Shemba Kyush, Shemba Dela Shi Sebe Jumeli, Jiba Chis, Yen Den Tong Yong Sebe Shizu Sholo Gani, one who sees and apprehends a substantial self, generous attachment to not getting uh, separated from one's being. By this attachment, one becomes attached to one's own happiness. Consequently, the attachment to one's happiness obscures oneself from seeing faults in one's position. Uh, here, position refers to psychophysical aggregates. And next, oneself superimpose unrealistic good qualities onto one's own psychophysical aggregates. Because of this, one engages in means for acquiring happiness, such as contaminated aggregates. Thus, so long as one remains attached to oneself, one constantly migrate, migrates in the cycle, cycle of cycle existence. <clears throat> so, that kind of ignorance, which drives unwise self-cherishing and self-preservation is the root cause of all suffering. Identifying and taking strong measures to counteract is, it is crucially important and beneficial. Okay. So now the fourth uh, is what are negative and positive emotions. And yes, okay. oh, I want to stop here. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so I'll just uh, summarize what Keshela has said. Uh, Keshela says, you know, that to the follower of the, the teachings of the Buddha, those different traditions, Pali traditions and the Sanskrit traditions coming together 
and having this kind of dialogue and sharing each other's understanding of the teachings of the Buddha is the only way how to bring harmonies and how to bring sort of, you know, the, uh, together and, uh, you know, respect to each other's tradition and so forth. Then he, you know, they went through his own main, his main topic, that is the uh, dependent origination. He said, you know, the dependent origination is the essence of the teachings of the Buddha. It, that, that teaching is the core, the, the core of the teachings of the Buddha. And also said that, that teaching is a unique teachings uh, of the Buddha compared to other, you know, the teachers. Through the understanding of the dependent origination, you know, the, uh, the eliminating or freeing ourselves from suffering is the very unique teachings that Buddha, historical Buddha, had given. And then, uh, uh, you know, the, his, uh, his uh, paper is already printed in the book that was con distributed yesterday. There are, you know, he explained this topic under four or five uh, outlines. And the first outline is the etymology. And uh, there he, you know, go through more detail on the dependent origination in English or in Tibetan, then Del, Padita Samupata. And uh, uh, his, explain, his, his explanation is based on some of those great Indian masters like the Basubandhu and Asanga, also, you know, those some of other Indian masters like Nagarjuna and the Chandakirti. Through that, you know, uh, to understand the, the different connotation or etymology that he Geshe-la used, the different connotation from that word of dependent origination or the dendo. Then also he explained about the benefits of you know uh, understanding the dependent origination. And that is also, he explained, based on some of the Mahana Sutras, uh, sorry, Sanskrit based sutras, and also the one of great Indian master, Chandakirti, you know, the, uh, uh, one of his writings. And then uh, he explained the, the different levels of the dependent originations, as one of the previous speaker explained four or five or four, you know, the levels of understanding of dependent origination, geshe briefly explained uh, three or uh, two levels of you know, the meaning of dependent origination. Then also he explained you know, the usefulness, the usefulness of understanding of dependent origination in our everyday lives. If we understand dependent origination in our everyday lives, not in an intellectual level, of course intellectual understanding is important, but in a more practical level, then our life will be more peaceful, more productive. If we do not have, you know, if we do not apply the understanding of dependent origination in our day, everyday lives, then uh, the uh, reality will be other, you know, the, uh, other side, which is more uh, physically as well as mentally more difficulties. So that's what I have understood, uh, what geshe has, you know, explained. As uh, my apology, I have to stop Geshe-la in the middle of his in the reading, uh, and that's the rule uh, I have to uh, apply. So now uh, I'm going to invite the, you know, the, uh, the, for the questions. And first I would like to take questions from the speakers, uh, from the abbots, and then uh, I will go to the, you know, the other participants. Uh, if you raise your hand, then I will, you know, the... Okay, first I will take from here. I have a very general question that all the monks can unanimously answer or individually answer. <laughs> <laughs> My concern, and also not just observation, big concern is in the Buddhist tradition, we have the venerable monks have a lot of knowledge, is a really wonderful thing, you know, that's the only way to get enlightened, and things like that. But in terms of outreaching the society, there's not much. And in some countries, it is now happening that people are really saying 
that monks come, give teaching, take money, take food, and go away, do nothing. So they turn to Christianity. This is happening in many places I visited. So this is for me a big concern. And in fact, recently I was reading something very interesting where he says, ignorance is not the root cause of suffering, inaction is the root cause of suffering. <laughs> so can you please elaborate on this and you know how important it is, I need to know your view. Yeah, I would like to say briefly on that issue. I think that issue, as you raise, you know, the, we, are, we are not re really reaching out to the community. It's a real issue we need to seriously need to think about. What are the solutions? How can we, you know, reach out to them? But that issue is more serious in the traditional, the Buddhism is, you know, they, uh, what's called the traditional, their, uh, their practice. But in the West, it's slightly different. I lived in the West for many years. Uh, many lay communities, for example, the center where I uh, taught you know, the, for nearly uh, 24 years, uh, the people who come to the classes are not monks and nuns. They are lay people. They have full majority, they have full, you know, full-time job. They have family to raise. But it's, it is in the, our, you know, like, you know, the Buddhism is the traditional uh, the, uh, religion. That, that in those countries have more serious problem on that issue. Uh, but I really don't know what is the solution. There might be a solution, and I think we should work together how to, how to, how to build that solution. Uh, you know, th that is my blah, blah, anyway. Next question. Are we completely done? <laughs> so then if there are not questions, I will uh, conclude this session, although we have 15 minutes still uh, for the tea break, but it is good to have a tea break, a little bit longer than it's scheduled. Uh, I would like to say thank you for the, all the speakers, uh, their great uh, paper and great speech. And also I would like to say thank you for the organizer to organize this amazing seminar, which is very, very extremely useful. And also thank you for giving me this session's chair. Thank you. <laughs>